Yeah, I love the music. It helps to wake me up. I hope it gets you out of bed and, you know, ready for the day ahead. Headbanging stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this kind of stuff, you can't, you can't stay you can't in bed. Sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> Get up. Mm, wake, up, ah. wake, up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Morning to you. Thank you for staying with us. And it's Monday, and it's a time when we always talk about serious matters. And we want to say good morning to our dermatologist, Dr. Andrew Ford. Good to see you. And you've got another um, one of those big terms, you know, that to scare <laughs> us about um, skin challenges. Yes, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Yes, today we're talking about something called mycosis fungoides, which is a T-cell <laughs> uh, skin cancer. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's, we, we've talked about a few skin cancers, but the reason why I thought it was important to speak about that today is because it has a, a resemblance to things which we mentioned before, mm -hmm. like psoriasis and types of oval eczemas and that sort of thing. And it itches. Yeah, and it does itch. itch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it can easily be mistaken for something else. Yes. How common is it, though, Dr. Ford? Well, mycosis fungoides isn't very common. Uh, the, the numbers range between 1 in 100 to 300,000. Uh, mm -hmm. But I can tell you, even though we only have 280,000, I, I myself have three patients with uh, mycosis fungoides, and there's no telling uh, how many the other uh, dermatologists have. So, well, so who does it affect and when does it affect you? Have no fear, <laughs> men preferably. Really? Men more than, okay. men more than women. Yeah, guys, it's hard for guys. Uh, it's almost twice as common in men than in, in, in women. Mm -hmm. And it tends to affect you in the, in the middle, middle years, so wow. uh, around the 40s and 50s. Okay. But still there are children who can have it and you can have it at a very advanced age. So it stretches the, the entire gamut of of ages, but Here's a photo mostly of the, what it looks like. the I'm middle a years. But, yes, yes, this is the, the earliest stage, which is the patch stage at the very beginning. Uh, you just, in this case, is a Caucasian. You just get uh, some flat areas that are discolored on the skin. In, in this case, they're red, but in the case of darker skin, it may just be, be darker mm -hmm. or sometimes lighter. So it looks rather innocuous and, and can resemble many yeah. superficial things like, well, you know, the thing, uh, pityriasis, versicolor that we call liver yeah. spots and that sort of thing. So uh, it can be, it can occur, it can look as though like it's... like a psoriasis as well. Yes, it does look like a psoriasis. So that's why it's difficult to diagnose in the, in the early stages because it can, it can fool many people, including uh, doctors. So can this be fatal? In, in some cases, yes, but it has to change that the T cells enter the blood and that's something that you call Cesare syndrome, which is mm -hmm. a is a case where it's in the skin as well as in the blood. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask you about that um, because it can remain on the skin and then it can dissipate or it could permeate uh, the, the, the skin and go into, in, into the, the tissue. Yes, the, the, the course of mycosis fungoides is, can be very long and it's referred to as being indolent, which is kind of lazy or it has no symptoms and you can have it for years, 20 years, and it's just there. Uh, but in some cases it can enter the blood and that's when you call it the scissory syndrome and, and sometimes it can go into the organs as well. This is so this is a black skin? Yes, and this is a case where it's patches and plaques. So you notice that some of the areas are raised and they tend to be dry. But in the darker skin you tend to get lots of discoloration and, and darkening. You also notice there are some lighter patches as well on the skin. But it likes to affect areas that are covered by your t-shirt and short pants or your swimsuit. Mm. So. Uh, okay. It usually is in covered areas, so some people can have it and it starts out and they, you know, it's covered, you can't tell that they have it. Is it self-imposed since it's a type of skin cancer in a sense? No, it isn't self-imposed. There, there is a, a variant of it which can come from an infection, mm. uh, which is an HTLV-1 infection, which is something that is transmitted between individuals, a sexually transmitted disease. But mm. that, that type uh, usually manifests itself a little differently okay. uh, to this. The the, I, I want you to describe the, the, the rash, though. Um, what, what does it look like? I know we just saw it there. Yes. I mean, I, I well, the, the rash starts as patches, uh, okay. which are discolored patches. That's smooth areas of skin with smooth. discoloration. Okay, but yes. no, no, no and irritation. And then you get to the, or that's called the premycotic stage. Then okay. you get to the, the plaque stage where it's slightly raised off of the skin. Mm -hmm. So that may be just less than a millimeter or a millimeter in thickness, but irregular shapes like circles or other shapes, you call annular shapes, mm -hmm. just they can be bizarre shapes as, as well. 
Mm -hmm. and it's raised. Then the, the latter stage is the tumor stage where you mm -hmm. have something that looks like a mushroom. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, the misnomer, the mycosis it, yeah. uh, fungoides mm -hmm. was uh, coined because it, in the later stages it looks like a uh, mushroom, yeah, mushroom and it tends to, mushroom, you mean, like, yes, like yeah. you see outside on the, on the ground, yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Or a mushroom that you'd eat. Yeah. But that must be pretty scary. Yeah, well, it, when, you get to to, when you get to that stage, that's a, a very aggressive stage and more likely to have the the cells in the blood, in which case it, it can be uh, a fatal uh, problem. So what? if it's not self-imposed, then is it genetic or...? Well, when, when they do testing on the cells, there are genes that are added or genes that are missing, but all cancerous uh, cells do have uh, some genetic abnormality. Mm -hmm. But there isn't any, uh, you know, there's no evidence that you can pass it on from one person to the next uh, mm -hmm. in a family way, even though within a family there can be several people who can, who can have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the rarity in both races? Is it more prevalent in either one of them? Well, it's prevalent in both, uh, around the same, but you know, here you, you see it predominantly in the darker skins, because that's our dominant uh, population here. How do you get it? Where does it come from? We don't know. Uh, you know, there's so many things <laughs> where you're... That's even more scary. <laughs> 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 the important thing <laughs> is to be aware, but you have to realize that if, if your doctor is looking at something and calling it psoriasis or mm -hmm. calling it eczema, mm -hmm. and it's 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 not relenting and it's just there, mm -hmm. then it may be time to have a skin biopsy to, to consider uh, that you may have mycosis fungoides. Uh, to the trained eye, there is a certain look to it and, and with experience you, you tend to think about it as soon as you look at it because there's a, you can have uh, patches and plaques and variations of them and they can wax and wane as you mentioned, come and go. So when it starts to be, be indolent and, and not changing, then you have to do some further tests to make sure that that's not what you're dealing with. So many patients that uh, have it uh, usually are, are misdiagnosed initially because of the, the difficulty with the diagnosis. So it can take years to, to come up with a diagnosis sometimes. And that's severely itchy. Well, not, most people don't have a lot of symptoms. So when you start to get the thicker ones, the plaques, uh, certainly it gets itchy. That's interesting, though. Yeah. Listen, I, I know you have some questions and you, you want to ask the doctor. Yeah. I, I also want to ask about treatment. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we welcome your calls, 228-5562, 228-5563, and we're going to talk about treatment and more on, on Morning Bobby. Coming up on 20 minutes after the uh, 6 o'clock on this Monday morning, and we're talking about a skin condition called mycosis fungoides. 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 It's not yes. so funny. Uh, mm -hmm. Fungoides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Andrew Fodor, a dermatologist. I, I am kind of curious. For a skin condition, one of the treatments is exposure to the sun. Yes, uh, there are light treatments for mm. this, like uh, ultraviolet, ultraviolet A. Uh -huh. uh, there's ultraviolet B with a, a substance that you take called a sorolin, something. That's a treatment you call PUVA, which is mm. a, a shortening for the, the treatment. Uh, so there are sun treatments, but since it's so uh, long-lasting, the treatments are just to keep the symptoms away and to try to get those uh, plaques to flatten out. Uh, because a lot of people do very well and can, you know, can live uh, normal lives other than have dis having discolorations on the skin. Uh, topical steroids are, are another common treatment as well uh, because the, the steroids tend to have a skin thinning effect 
and that also cuts down the itching and the dryness. So topical steroids are one of the major uh, treatments that we have as well. But if the condition gets worse and you have uh, the tumors, then you may get uh, chemotherapy or you may get some uh, radiotherapy as well, especially if it's uh, solitary areas. And if you have the Cesare syndrome, in the Cesare syndrome, the cells that are in the skin, these abnormal T cells, which are cancerous, uh, appear in the blood. And, and these uh, cells in the blood are called Cesare cells. So that's a more aggressive uh, form of it, where you get red all over, and that's really itchy and dry. So in the Cesare uh, cells, you'll get chemotherapy. And now they can even have a stem cell transplant. So some people with the Cesare syndrome, which is the end stage of it, uh, have got better. This, mm. this rash looks different to me, but one of our viewers wanted to know whether it looks similar to the lupus rash. No, uh, well, the, the lupus rash is in the classification of something you call papulosquamous eruptions, but the thing is, the lupus rash uh, causes more thinning of the skin, mm -hmm. and also the hair follicles are plugged, and you get uh, lightening uh, discoloration with the lupus rash lots of times. But yes, the lupus rash can have oval shapes on the, on the body, especially on sun exposed areas. Mm -hmm. But this is something that occurs mostly on, on the covered areas. But interestingly, there is a variant which has a, a long uh, name called a poikiloderma uh, variant. And in that variant, the skin is very thin, it's lighter, and it does have uh, blood mm -hmm. vessels. So uh, there, there is a variant that can uh, look like it, mm -hmm. but it's a lot broader on the skin. The, the patches and plaques are but much the wider. the sun definitely isn't good for someone with lupus. Well, definitely, definitely. Right. The sun so is not your sun friend. that treatment would uh -huh. not be good for you. No. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Does this affect someone and their work? Because, you know, it looks so upsetting Yucky. and uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? What, what, how, how would it affect someone if Well, there's, a, there's a big psychological uh, effect on individuals. And in, in Barbados, you know, if you have a skin condition, people uh, are mm -hmm. very, well, we use the word scornful. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbadians, if, if they don't know about something, they assume everything is contagious. Mm -hmm. and, and people are treated differently. So that's the, the big uh, problem with the condition, just dealing with, uh, interacting with people and, and you know they're not most of them are not going to understand that what you have isn't uh, contagious. But I mean if you as you indicate most of it is hidden under your your shorts or, or your, your Yes shirt. but there's some some individuals who have it on almost the entire body and maybe sometimes mm. on the face or on the tops of the hands mm. uh, they're areas that you can't really hide uh, but that's in you know that not everyone uh, presents like that. Does it yeah. go away eventually completely though? And some people are fortunate it and it goes away but uh, you, can have, you can have relapsing and remitting. The, the course is very, uh, you cannot predict the course uh, at all. Okay, so your calls are welcome. If you would like to ask Dr. Andrew Ford, our dermatologist, a question, any questions, feel free to give us a call at 228-5562 or 228-5563. Yeah, the topic is mycosis fungoides. Very I, good. I, I got it. Very yeah, good. perfect, Not perfect. Yeah. It's lovely. And we had a we had a photograph of a moment ago. I just wanted to see if we can if we can get that back mm. in and explain what we're looking wow. at. What we're looking okay, at. Okay, so the again this is the mycosis fungi is the patch and plaque stage. And you can see it can cover an extensive uh, part of the body. That's almost the whole body that's uh, covered there. Mm. So this is one of the situations where you mention, you know, the the social aspect of it, having the condition, people not understanding that it's, it's harmless to them, mm -hmm. but the individual is going through uh, the process of trying to get the, the skin uh, better. So uh, this uh, individual is going, undergoing a type of light therapy that, that does help. The, does the this skin. also affect the private parts? Well, it can affect uh, anywhere on the skin, it can. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, th it's, it's something else, though. The, is, the is it a long process treatment? Yes, the tre treatment continues over years, but mm -hmm. uh, the individuals are in good health when you check their their blood, uh, the cells are normal, mm -hmm. uh, the organs are normal, but it's just in the skin because these cancerous cells uh, remain there. You know, yeah. people always want to know though if the marks will go away. Yes, well, <laughs> if you can, in some cases, once you can get it, get the patches, uh, get to the patch stage, then mm -hmm. the marks will have a chance of going away. But it's very unpredictable. Some people do very well. Some people just smolder and stay there. Uh, the, it's very difficult to predict what will happen. Okay. But we do try all of our modalities with it. We, we talked a moment ago about how people take other people with, with this kind of skin condition. What about the patients themselves? Is, is there a kind of psychological impact? Because at the end of the day, it's still cancer. Yes. You, you know, uh, do, do you have to have some other kind of 
support in addition to the normal treatment? Well, the important thing for individuals with the condition is to understand everything that they can about the condition. And that does have a calming uh, effect because you know it's unlike other things that have the word cancer. Uh, mm. This is not one that's going to rapidly uh, cause your demise. So in, in many cases, people uh, you know, die of some other thing, like you know, the usual cardiovascular problem or other things. But if you tend to have the thicker form, then some individuals can get another type of cancer uh, that's completely unrelated and that that can be the thing that causes uh, causes everything to end okay. but uh, in for my clothes fungoid it's, it's one of the if you're gonna get a skin cancer I guess even though it has a lot of uh, disfigurement uh, of the skin mm -hmm. is something that that you know just is is much friendlier okay. all right let's go to the phone line good morning good morning good morning, morning. Yes. I'm calling about the same issue. Uh, my son has a skin disease named Rosea, Rosea, mm. sure. Mm. And it comes out on the skin, but it stands so long to disappear. I would like to know if you could give me any questions, answers about it. Okay, uh, you may be talking about pityriasis rosea, yeah. which is another papular squamous eruption that gives you bumps and oval areas. Uh, yes, but actually that condition is only supposed to occur once. Sometimes in the literature they say really it can occur more than once, but I, I personally believe that if you get it more than once, if you have another condition uh, like psoriasis or a type of eczema, but there's something called uh, pityriasis lichenoides chronica, mm -hmm. which is a very uh, long-lasting version. What you say it's called? <laughs> it's, <laughs> called, it's called pityriasis, which means dryness. Uh -huh. uh, lichenoides, which Lichenoides. means the surface can look kind mm -hmm. of shiny and flat. And mm -hmm. chronica is the word that tells chronic. you you can have it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could very well be that that child has pityriasis like anoides chronica, which is treated with a low-dose antibiotic, and, and really time is what gets rid of that. But that diagnosis requires a biopsy, mm -hmm. and again, there are so many conditions that look like that, the papular squamous eruptions, that invariably, if your doctor is, is having difficulty, then a biopsy would be the thing, a skin biopsy would be the thing to to clear everything up. But she called it rosacea, which is also a skin condition, right, but is uh, that only for Caucasians? Well, rosacea is a condition that occurs on the face, most, mm -hmm. most commonly in Caucasians. Redness. It causes pustules and bumps on the face. Mm -hmm. And it used to be mentioned in, I mean, with acne, so they used to be called acne rosacea, but they're two completely different conditions, mm -hmm. different causes and etiology. Uh, so they've been separated and rosacea starts with flushing, you know, with heat and with uh, drinking wine. Mm -hmm. So Doug wouldn't be able to drink wine if that <laughs> were the case. Mm. But, uh, and then it eventually goes into bumps and bumps with pustules. So that's treated with low-dose antibiotics mainly or rub-on antibiotic. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you think you have that condition, it's called mycosis fungoides. You need some to go yes. see your doctor, well, but anytime, sunlight usually yes. helps. Anytime you have something that your doctor calls psoriasis or eczema or mm -hmm. any other thing and it isn't really going away, uh -huh. uh, then you have to consider consider that. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. maybe not too much moisture or is moisture, because you said it's only in the areas that are covered, right? Yes. Yeah, well, so is it, you think that too much moisture could have something to no, do with it? No, it doesn't have any, have any effect okay. on it. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Now we know about the fungoides. Now we know. <laughs> you say that word with such, oh, I love it, I love <laughs> just like, almost like hump day. <laughs> no, but listen, this is not, perhaps, this, this is another question for you, because I... We I, have more time? Yeah, 30 seconds. You and the producer, I, man. I, I was watching, I was watching cricket, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I saw the captain of the, whoever it was, the Kings 11 Punjab, uh -huh. George Bailey, as he was going out at the end of the match to shake the hands, he sneezed into his Ooh. hand. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> You know, well, and maybe sugar all he has. Oh. Let's, hope, let's hope there's no uh, Ebola or anything in there. Huh? He should have given them a knock. <laughs> you noticed that? Yeah. Who was, who was the Australian cricketer who used to spit in his ass? Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's a different kind of skin condition. Sporting graces that are just not for We're going to be back in just a moment.